Second. And the second question is uh, about the garment below the ankle. Some people say, talk about one hadith, uh, and some people say, well, the second hadith does mention arrogance. So if you're not doing it out of arrogance, then you can wear it. So what's your, what's your view on that? Okay, I will answer inshallah. Now, his second ha the, uh, question is very common one. The issue of wearing the garments below the ankles. There are a number of hadiths. Those who say that it is permissible without arrogance refer to a hadith, neglecting the general hadiths. And the scholars' methodology of dealing with these hadiths is not by picking and choosing, rather by implying and implementing and combining all these hadiths to understand them. You cannot come to one verse of the Quran that talks about whoever is surrounded by his sin, then he will abide in hell forever and eternity and overlook the other ayat and verses. Because this is what the Khawarij do. And hopefully you're not from them. So how to look at it? Scholars had explained that. They said that there are two categories, two types of sins. One, a sin that involves arrogance. Two, a sin that does not involve arrogance. So the one that involves arrogance includes a number of torments and punishments. And the one that does not have arrogance has only one punishment. So if I drag my clothes below my ankle without arrogance, I'm just neglectful. The Prophet said والسلام, that the punishment of the area covered from your ankle to the ground is in hellfire. So if it's this much, it's this much. If it's this much, it's this much. If this much, this much. That's it. And we have from the Sunnah hadiths where certain organs and limbs are being punished, not the whole body. As in the hadith of Abu Talib, the Prophet said, والسلام, the least person punished in hellfire is a person where two fire stones are put in his shoes or sandals. From their heat, his, he his brain boils. So it's only that area that is tormented, but look what happened to the whole body accordingly. Without arrogance, this is going to be punished. What about if a person does it with arrogance? We have a hadith that says four types of pe uh, uh, there are three types of people that Allah Azza wa Jal does not look at them, does not purify them, that does not speak to them, and Allah would punish them severely on the Day of Judgment. One of them is the one who drags his garment. So the scholar said, ah, this one drags his garment. The other one also dragged his garment. What's the difference? The other hadiths that stated that while a man was dragging his garment, walking in arrogance, Allah made the earth has, uh, have a, a downfall or an, um, uh, to be opened and swallow it. And he's uh, falling throughout the whole earth to the seventh earth. Ah, this one includes arrogance. And in another hadith, Allah does not look at a man who drags his clothes out of arrogance. Ah, this one is uh, with arrogance as well. So you see that there are classifications. And the hadith of Abu Bakr, which a lot of the people say when the Prophet said this about dragging the garments below the ankles, Abu Bakr said, O Prophet of Allah, I'm a skinny man. And my garment... I tie it as much as possible to my waist, but because I'm skinny, it keeps on falling. So it may fall under or below the ankles. So the Prophet gave him a declaration, He said, you are not one of them. Don't worry. So people say, okay, I too do this not out of arrogance. He says, no, 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 no. You don't, or you cannot afford 
such a permission from the Prophet If you have one, I would say, be my guest, but you don't. Therefore, this is an exception for Abu Bakr because the Prophet knows what is in his heart through Allah's informing him, Azza wa Jal, and I hope this answers your question.